All right, so I figured out how to do the the trail. We hit the green flag, we start creating this trail, and we're moving it back and forth, and we got the color switching and everything. So, what is going on here? Uh, first, let me just show a couple, let me just show this. So, we're basically gonna need four different variables for this. Three of them are up here. They're just uh, the ball clone number. So that's gonna be, that's gonna keep track of which clone we're at, the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth. The current costume, this is going to register, uh, since this original ball is flickering, um, we need to know what costume that is in order to calculate which costume to switch to next. If we take this out, uh, you see they all kind of just stay the same color in the line, and only the first one is, is flickering. And then the other one here is the uh, the OG ball Y position. This one we can technically do without if we move this, but then uh, it's in there because if we physically move this sprite up here, then the trail is going to start from where that is. Um, and it gets weird if we don't uh, like reset the game. So for some reason, if this gets changed between games, uh, it'll reset back. And then our uh, biggest variable here is the ball X positions, and that's this list on the right. That's going to keep track of uh, where our ball is on the X axis. That's this horizontal axis here. Uh, so uh, I have this when I receive start. So in the backdrop, I have when the green flag is pressed. This is essentially like the arcade being turned on. Uh, I'm just going to broadcast start game, and you know, in your game, you put, you have a start button to click it, and then it will broadcast our game. So we're starting off with I'm receiving a message to start the game. Uh, so when we start the game, uh, I guess we can also probably need to like show this sprite. And uh, when the green flag is pressed, when it's turned on, we should probably hide the sprite. So. Okay. Uh, it visually changes nothing. Anyway, all right. So when I res when I start the game, uh, we're gonna make sure that the sprite is showing. We're gonna set the original uh, ball position Y, so that way the clones know where to go to. We're gonna delete everything in the X positions because you see, even though the game has stopped, it recorded the last one. So we're gonna make sure that it deletes all of that and we reset it for the game. And then we're gonna create trail. And so now this function is this right here. Uh, and I could just put this in here. Uh, but why don't we do that? Why do we create a function? Well, the reason we create a function is because uh, if we want to repeat the code ever, the function is going to come in handy. Uh, but also more importantly, it helps kind of label. Instead of adding a note to what this part of the thing is doing, we know that this part of the code is responsible for creating the trail. So we're creating a named block of code, and that's going to help us understand when we go back to edit this, if we want to make changes, well, where do I go in the code? If I were to combine all of this together into one long line, it would be harder, uh, which I could do. Let, let me show you what that would look like real quick. So set trail is here. So technically I could do that. The create clone, I could do that. Could add this in here and add that in here. And it's doing the same thing. But now we have this really big long line of code that's just a lot harder to understand what's going on. So we break up the code in the steps that we want to do, and that helps signifies the functions that we're going to write. Um, and then this just makes it a lot more readable and a lot easier to understand. So, okay, so we create the trail. So this is gonna happen forever. And the first part of creating the trail is setting the trail list. So that's what this ball X positions array is. And it's going to insert the current X position of our ball at the first spot of the array. So the first spot always has the newest position. Then we're going to check if the length of it is greater than five. If it is, 
then we're going to delete the sixth one. So if we add in the first one, it pushes all these back. This will get to six, but we don't want to have a trail that's six long. We only want it five long. So we're going to delete the sixth one so that way we don't create clones of it. If we want our trail to be longer, we can change this number to be one greater and then delete the seventh one. And now our trail uh, is six long. And we can drag this up here. I mean, we can do the same thing for 10 and 11. And we start having a longer trail and we just get different uh, effects. Uh, so another one that looked semi good was seven and eight for a slightly longer trail. Um, but so that's one of the things to play around with. So after we set the trail list, uh, we're going to go ahead and create our clones. So we come over here to create clone. We set the ball clone number to zero. Uh, that's just uh, the initial setting. Uh, and then we're going to repeat for the length of the ball X position. So that's the length of this array. Uh, it's five. So we're going to repeat five times. First, we're going to change the ball clone number by one. And then we're going to create a clone uh, of the OG clone. And the reason we need a separate one and we can't do clone of myself is because we have this in here. So whenever we move the ball left and right, if the clones are creating it of itself, then all of the clones will move left and right. So we're going to create one other ball that's hidden, uh, and that's going to be what we that's going to be in charge of all of our clones. So that way the original can still move freely, but separately from the clone trail. Um, okay, so, uh, so then, yeah, so then this first clone uh, creates, it repeats, uh, since the length is five, it'll repeat a second time. The ball clone number changes up by one, so it becomes two. We create the second clone. Two is less than five, so it goes up uh, and repeats it again. We change the ball number to th from two to three. We create the third clone, and then for the fourth clone, then the fifth clone, and then we stop that function. It's really important to have stop these scripts because this function is creating multiple clones, and then this is also happening faster than we're uh, deleting them. And if we don't have stop this script, we'll have a lot of these scripts continuing to run in the background. Uh, and then our game has a likelihood of crashing. So let's go over to start this clone. Uh, or let's, before we, I guess before we flip over to that. Uh, so those clones are creating. And then the last thing for creating the trail is we wait 0 0.025 seconds before switching to the next costume, setting the current costume, that's our variable that's keeping track of the current costume, uh, to whatever the current costume number is. So we switch the next costume, which from purple, the next one will be back up to yellow. And then we're going to use that reference in this clone. So the clone, now this ball is just hidden. When the green flag is hurt, when the game is started, we just want to make sure that this is always hidden. We're only going to have clones of this. And the first thing that we want to do is set the initial settings, which is the uh, uh, which is the x, uh, which is the size, the x position, the y position, and the costume. So here it is the size. The first one will be 90%. The x position is going to be equal to, if it's the first clone, so ball clone number one, then it's going to be equal to the first position in here. If it's the second one, it'll be the second x position. So that's how they're keeping track of the of those positions. And we set the y to the, the OG y settings which is you know whenever we move this around and we switch the costume to the current costume plus the ball clone number so what that is saying is for our current costume is yellow and we're the first clone then the first clone is the current costume yellow plus one which is blue and for the second clone the costume is yellow and the second one is purple so that's how you have this uh, I wish I could just like pause this but like when this is yellow, the next one is blue, the next one is pink, the next one is green. And then uh, it'll switch on the next click to where this, uh, uh, the original ball will change from yellow to blue. And so then the first clone is going to be pink because it's the current costume blue plus one, which is purple. And then uh, luckily this loops around automatically. So if you get plus five from pink, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, it'll actually be pink again. So the, the, la the tip of the tail should be the same color, presumably, as the first. 
Uh, all right, so we switch all that stuff. And then we need to calculate the position and the size. So every clone, we know the clone number, and we know uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. From the clone number, we get the x positions. But now we also need the y. We need to calculate y. The clone needs to be further down, and the size needs to be smaller. So we repeat this the clone number of times. So if it's the first clone, then you change y by negative 20. You change the size by minus 15. Uh, since you only repeat it once, it's done and it stops the script. For the second clone, uh, it will change y by negative 20, change the size by 15. Then it will repeat this a second time, change y by negative 20, change size by negative 15. So essentially, it's multiplying this number by 2. The third clone will multiply it by 3. The fourth clone will multiply it by 4. Um, the reason we do it this way, instead of saying like, you know, uh, if ball clone number equals 1, set y and set size to this. If ball clone number equals 2, that's just a lot more checks. We can do this in three lines of code. We can change all of them. Uh, then that's when we want to show the clone. And we're going to wait 0.35 seconds before deleting it. And the reason for this is uh, we kind of have this after image trail. And this might still look good. This might be the effect you want. But if we change this to like 0.15, uh, the trail starts getting more elongated. So maybe this is better in line, but you don't have that uh, after image effect kind of like of swinging it. If we were to do 0 0.05, we're just able to get further away from our trail. So you have to, this is a number that you can play around with to decide uh, where does it look good. And I, I actually think 0.15 does look good. Um, point 0.15 looks good as a trail. The trail is like continually following it. We have that wavy pattern. If you do something like point 0.35, then you see there's like two balls on the same line here. Uh, that kind of helps give it this after image effect and really helps with the motion. Uh, so that's just personal preference. That's up to you. Uh, same thing if we if we want our trail to be a little bit further down. So we notice that this trail is really close at the, be the beginning, but then it gets really farther away with the spacing. So uh, you know, something like negative 30, the trail gets really far down, uh, but maybe this looks more in line with what you want to do. So that's a number to change to change around is how uh, close or far you want your trail to be from you. Uh, and then same with the size. Right now, I found that minus 15 with having five of them works really good because 15 times five is 80. So it'll change by 80%, and it starts off at 90. So the last one is 10%. So that's why if we added more to our trail, uh, we make this go to 7 and 8, the last ones are just the same size because they're the smallest. So we'd probably have to change it to minus 10 at that point. And that should give us a better uh, trail for that. But then here, I feel like it's uh, a little weird because it's a little like too long. I don't know, that looks pretty decent. Uh, but that's, you kind of have to guess and check and play around with all these numbers yourself. Um, I'd also definitely recommend pausing the video to look at the code if you need to copy any of this. And let's see, all right, the last thing is when we have going left and right, A and D, we want these to be their own things. We don't really, uh, Yeah, uh, the reason that we have the 0 0.05 here is because there's a couple of ways I can move as a character. I can keep hitting the keys and go as fast as I can click, uh, or I can hold it down. And so if I take these out and I hold it down, I can get really far away from my trail, and that, uh, you know, the trail is just not following enough. I'm going faster than the trail can keep up. So by waiting 0 0.0, this is like, this is a 20th of a second. Just by waiting a 20th of a second, it forces the movement to be less, so that way the trail can keep up. So that'll be something to play around with, uh, the speed of, of this, uh, and also how much you want to change x and y by. Because uh, if you have it moving further, then the trail is also going to take longer to keep up, and it, it, it just changes with the how fluid it is. Um, if you do that and have it a little bit longer, then I think you'd have to start messing with how often you create the trail. So if it starts moving further, 
uh, distances, you need the trail to, to create more often so that way it doesn't skip. Uh, but I found these numbers work pretty well. Uh, and that is pretty much everything, I believe, for creating a sprite trail. Yep, you need a, an original ball, you need to have a clone, uh, and then the, you know, multiple colored costumes. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the screen up for a second. If you'd like to pause the video now to look at the code for this, uh, go ahead and I'm switching over to the clone if you'd like to pause the video to look at this code now would be a good time to do that and the last thing is in the backdrop pretty easy to pause and look at that all right so that is how you create a clone trail mm -hmm. I hope your project turns out great uh, those are the numbers to you know all the different numbers we talked about to play around with so go ahead, play around with those, and uh, happy gaming.